Hello everyone, this is an FCI 7100 fire alarm control panel. These were first produced in the late 1990s. They were designed for small to medium sized facilities. The 7100 is a compact, cost effective addressable panel with one or two SLC loops. Each loop can hold up to 197 devices, 99 detectors, and 98 modules. The 7100 panels also featured a built in dialer, a PC printer interface, and a variety of option modules, including one for networking. So let's jump right into this. For this demonstration, we have a couple of FCI devices. On a table, we have an MS7A pole station, an ASD PL2F smoke detector, and an HE ADEF STW multi-tone horn strobe. It's a rebrand of the Cerberus Powertronics MTL. This one is set to temporal horn. On the floor, we have an AOM2R relay module, just there for show. Nothing's connected to it. An FSL strobe is a rebranded Federal Signal Valve strobe. And an AMM4 monitor module connected to an MS2 pull station. Without further ado, here we go. system is silenced. This is a two-wire device, so the strobe shuts off as well, but the FSL strobe down here continues to flash, and the relay module is still active. Now let's set off this smoke detector. Last device, the MS2, which is pretty tough to pull. Okay, should be all set to reset now. And back to normal. Throughout its lifespan, the 7100 had different cabinet types. This is the original older cabinet type with the FCI logo on it. And this one has a plastic door, but there are also metal doors available for this cabinet. There was a more square type metal cabinet that was introduced in the early 2000s. And in the mid 2000s, there was the B-Slim cabinet, the same used with the E3 series panels. While the B-Slim cabinets were larger, Gamewell FCI had dedicated retrofit kits to upgrade a 7100 to an E3 or S3 that was in a B-Slim cabinet. While there were multiple different cabinet variations, the internal layout of the 7100 remained roughly the same. Right here is the transformer, battery connectors, and a fuse, AC input, batteries, and there's a terminal block down there if there's a dialer configured. Right here is the keypad and LCD display. It's a wiring diagram right here. So this small terminal block on the top left is the signal circuits, followed by a larger terminal block for relays, a smaller terminal block for the SLC loops, another one for auxiliary power, and another one for communications with enunciators, including the LCD 7100 or the RAN 7100. There's an RJ11 port here for RS-232 connections to a PC or a printer. And there's an optional piezo right here that's available on newer circuit boards as apparently the original piezos don't always work too well. So there's a slot for that. There are four connectors for option modules. There was a CAOM module, which converted the signal circuits or SLC loops to class A circuits. There was an MCOM module, which provided one additional output, either a city box, reverse polarity, or a releasing solenoid. There was a PTRM module, which provided isolation and transient protection for a printer interface. Finally, there was an INI module, which could connect up to 64 7100 panels together in a network. 
The keypad can be accessed with the door shut, so there's a key lock here to prevent unauthorized access. It's connected up here, and that can be taken out to unlock the panel. Now let's take a look at the menu interface. You got a couple options here. Let's start with config. It asks for the level four passcode. Default passcodes can be found in the user manual as per usual. So now we get a couple options here. Start with auto. Auto just allows the panel to be either completely cleaned out or just to update the SLCs. This is your basic auto programming functions. Global are your system options. You start with IO devices. You can set the verification for either the detectors or the manual stations. Sensitivity levels for detectors, you can all set to low. PAS or positive alarm sequence. And then multi-level, which sets the alert and action thresholds for the panel. Then go to next. You can set the delay times, silence inhibit or cutoff. And there's also coding and silencing. So you can set either signal circuit to be either steady or coded, and then silenceable or non-silenceable. The actual signal codings can be set in three codes. You set them here. You get steady, march time 60, march time 120, temporal, California code, and coded fours. System ID just sets the system normal message for the panel. Five are dialer options if one is installed. MISC options set multi acknowledge, alarm trouble reminder, walk test timeout, and then RS232 terminal supervision. Seven is enunciators. You set the number of LCD or LED enunciators. Eight is the baud rate for the RS232 port. And that's it for global options. Now let's check out inputs. Select an address for the device. This is the detector. Go to type. It's for electric detector. Two is the group, set to no group, but each device could be assigned a group for correlations. Three is verification, it's default. Sensitivity, there's day and night sensitivity that are both default. Five is the location, which is just the label for that device. And six is view, which shows a summary of this device and its configuration. Now let's check out a module. Modules start at 100, so 101 is this pole station. You get pretty much the same options. This is a manual station, and there are many different device types that can be configured for this. Leave this back at manual station. Group, and then verification sensitivity don't really matter for a module. Location, and then view shows the basic details for this device. Now let's look at outputs. Enter device address. 102 is the relay module down there. Type, it's a form C relay. General response options, groups, there's no group for this one. And pretty much everything else is the same. You got your location and your general summary of the device. Next is groups. We check group one. Set whether to activate for general alarm and general supervisory. And six is passcodes. Level four will be the most important passcode as this allows for programming, and they're often changed in many cases. If the level 4 passcode is changed, then you'll need to find a way to backdoor the panel if you want to access programming. There is a method out there to backdoor these panels, although it doesn't seem to be very public. Next in the main menu is walk, test, and drill. Got a level 1 passcode for this. So you have drill, audible, and silent walk testing. So drill is very straightforward. Next is I.O. It's a level 2 login. From here, outputs can be turned on and off. Devices can be enabled or disabled. 
and the system could be restarted. Next is clock. So level one login. So from here, you can set the time and date for the system, as well as night, weekend, and holiday settings for the sensitivity levels. Next is view. This is a level three login. Same menu as the configuration option, just all the options are read only. Nothing can be changed from here. Next is logs. Level two login again. So the logs can be displayed, printed, cleared, and there's also sensitivity logs. Display and all the events on the system are shown here. So all the login access, system resets. Fire drill. If you go even further back, you'll eventually find some alarm logs. There we go. Like that. And then we can also clear the logs and that resets the system as well. Last is info. Level one login again. So this just shows the system operating firmware and the last time the panel's configuration was updated. While we're here, this panel can be programmed with some PC software, although the software is proprietary and generally not accessible without a dongle, which technicians have. Older versions before 7.1 use an FCP configuration software, while newer ones use the Camwork software, which is also used with the S3 and E3 panels. The software is generally not accessible to collectors and sadly does prevent collectors from accessing more advanced features of these panels. So that is all for the FCI 7100 Fire Alarm Control Panel. These were phased out by the mid to late 2010s, with the S3 and the E3 being its replacements. These are still relatively common online, but they tend to be quite expensive. Overall, the 7100 is one of the better Gamewell FCI panels, as they are fast, reliable, and if you do happen to acquire one of these panels, more convenient to program as many other panels like the E3 and S3 require proprietary software to make changes. In any case, if you have any questions or comments on a 7100, feel free to post them below. But until next time, have a nice day.